गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन गुड आफ्टरनून सुरेश मेनन सर कैन यू हियर मी हेलो सुरेश सर हेलो सुरेश सर हेलो यस सर यस यस ओके आई आई वांट टू शेयर माय स्क्रीन कैन यू जस्ट टेल मी इट इज वर्किंग यस कैन यू सी दैट यस यस सर ओके वी आर व्हाट टाइम वी आर स्टार्टिंग Sir, within five minutes we'll start. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, properly. Thank you, thank you. And uh, we have one hour, right? Yes. Thank you. Excuse me, Suresh sir. Yes, madam. Uh, our topic is cyber security sensitization, isn't it? Correct, madam. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to confirm. Yes. Yes.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll start our afternoon session, third session. I'll introduce the uh, third expert uh, for the cybersecurity workshop. Third expert is Mr. Suresh Menon. Suresh Menon is having 31 years of experience in the IT industry in India and abroad, including almost 10 years of work experience in UAE and Oman and UK. He is currently the chief representative in India for Black Rich Technology. He has successfully conducted many cybersecurity awareness seminars regarding the dangers of cybercrime, threats, prevention, and IT Act across the corporate world, reality banking, hospitality, government education, healthcare, telecom, and other segments. Today, we are very fortunate to have his guidance. Today's topic, this session's topic is cyber security sensitization. So I welcome you, Suresh Man, sir, for this talk. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. First of all, thank you to the Baba Sai Ambedkar Technical University for inviting me. I thank uh, Dr. Chastri, Dr. Nandanwar, Shraddha, uh, for recommending my name and each one of you. Um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, in the next one hour, uh, what I plan to do is I am no expert. I am a Nitya Vidyarthi like you all, learning every day. In fact, it is a vast Samundar ocean out there. We are all learning each day. I just uh, you know plan to give an overview of what is happening. Uh, I believe I have one hour, so first half an hour into general uh, sensitization, and the next half an hour, roughly, uh, the next 15 20 minutes, roughly, onto zero trust of what we do for Blackridge. So, uh, uh, just a framework uh, solution. You know, what we do. So, once again, uh, it's uh, afternoon time, 2 to 3. My lecturing becomes that much easier because after a nice lunch, we feel like snoozing. So I hope I don't snooze. So please ensure that it can be interactive. And uh, in today's world, as we talk, as we are into a pandemic situation, there is an information overload, information explosion, and it is called infodemic. And like we in a social distancing, how do you ensure that we mention that we do a digital distancing to ensure that, like any other viruses, something has to happen to me, something will happen to me. But how do you make life difficult for the fraudster or the hacker? And that is where you know we get into all those things. So there are uh, multiple video screens in that. Uh, you know, I will skip for the you know limited time I have in today's world. Uh, you know, the earlier video was all about how we are connected in today's world, how we are integrated. There is no boundary. My bedroom doesn't have a wall anymore. So how are we integrated? Early morning when I get up for my you know from from my from, for my walks, I pull out, you know, uh, my uh, tracksuit from uh, IKEA, uh, you know, wardrobe coming from Sweden. I go out and have my coffee at Starbucks coming from US. After that, I go to office in my car, which is coming from Honda, Japan. And after that, uh, you know, once I decide to come back in the evening, watch Manchester United from UK. In the evening, I decide to have a Chinese baby. You know, my 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 life is absolutely integrated. And there is no boundaries. The world is servicing me. If the world is servicing me. There can be attacks from any other part of the world. And that is what we need to be aware of. We need to use common sense. I believe on this, uh, in this session, we have research scholars, we have students, we have, uh, you know, uh, faculty. So I am nobody to sit and give a session. I am going to equally learn from you people and you can be very proactive. I'm here to learn from you. So, you know, I'm just sharing whatever I need. So recently, uh, you look at it yesterday, there was a uh, news in the paper that Dr. Reddy labs have been hacked. Why was Dr. Reddy's uh, uh, laboratory hacked? Did they not have security in place? Of course, they would have had the best of security. So what is happening is Dr. Reddy is one of the organizations which is making the vaccine. Uh, so I'm sure in the world is you know trying to 
you know, hit back and see what is happening on the vaccine front. This morning, I was listening to the U.S. presidential final debate. What I heard is, you know, there's a whole lot of countries which are, you know, putting their heads into the uh, uh, the the, residen uh, the presidential elections, uh, either to rig it or, you know, make it one-sided. We have seen that earlier happening. Uh, we had the, in Mumbai, we had uh, the electrical breakdown last uh, week or so. In fact, uh, today, the, which has been put in place to understand why the electricity went off. We have had uh, earlier situations in Ukraine and Estonia where the uh, electricity grid was pulled down uh, you know, by the hackers. We don't know what has happened. We have had ATM robberies committed by people who have lost their jobs, blue collared workers who are now into crime because they want to support their people. We have uh, CSAM, which is child uh, sexual abuse material available during the lockdown. We have seen a trend there, you know, whole lot of things. Fake news is a big thing now. So these are all the things, not only me, everybody is facing across. So what are the 10 things that I will do to make life difficult for the fraudster difficult? So, you know, it's a oh my God situation. I, unfortunately, I have not switched on my camera, but I'm a bald man. Some attack happens to me. I don't have hair to pull. So please excuse me for that. But most of the attacks happen because it is a common sense. It is because of human error, not because of technical glitches. And that is where, you know, we have to be absolutely careful. We need to be disciplined. We need to have a cyber hygiene in place. Like we say, mask, you know. Social distancing karna hai. There are some things, uh, you know, on the on the internet. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you people are going to go into the corporate world. You people are going to give awareness lectures to the uh, arm janta and the normal people. So this is today. Information is the we have heard everybody telling new gold. In fact, India is going to become the data refinery. Forget about the oil refinery. India is going to once we start the data localization, we'll become the data refinery to the world. And uh, you know, the world is after your data, and data is you know, where, uh, is what everybody is after. So, uh, whole source of information lies all across, including a CD which is obsolete, DVD drive which is obsolete. But, uh, you know, there are ways that uh, people are using a DVD uh, drive to enter your network and hit you back. Dumpster diving, USB, a Stuxnet attack happened through a USB. Somebody put it into a uh, disconnected world. You know, that is where we are talking about uh, attacks. So everybody in today's world, either they have been hacked or they will be hacked. So all the big companies are in that situation today. Cosmos Bank, uh, 96 crores gone in two days. People were on the systems for, you know, about uh, eight to 12 months. So it is a highly organized attack happening worldwide. Even today, people have not been arrested. The five people who have been arrested are the money mills. We have not been able to track the money. So what is happening in, in, in types of cyber crime? In the morning, Shraddha Suratkar and... Uh, my good friend Harshad Mengle have covered a lot, actually. Technically, they have covered a lot on, you know, the types of cyber crime or, you know, what are the things that you need to do to prevent it? How does it happen? You know, what is dark net? What is deep fake? A whole lot of things. But one of the things what we are seeing currently during the pandemic is that, uh, you know, we are seeing phishing, fake news, CSAM, uh, crime against women, abuse, a lot of things have increased. And a whole lot of other things that pawn revenge, Insider threats, we create a, you know, uh, a wall across our uh, perimeter, across our uh, technology, but we forget that the people are the biggest thing, insider threats, ransomware is increasing. So these are all the few things that we do about. So uh, these are all been spoken about in the morning. So we talk about, you know, how open source intelligence, how open source intelligence uh, is helping a lot of investigation agencies to hit back uh, and catch the thief or the people who are fraudsters. So there is, uh, we talk about uh, artificial intelligence, we talk about machine learning, a whole lot of technology is also getting used by the police, multiple attacks like transmission threats, malicious code attacks. We talk about password threats because it is simple. We talk about physical threats. We talk about application threats because uh, buffer overflows. We don't do secure coding. We talk about social engineering, dumpster diving. The easiest way is dumpster diving, shoulder surfing, and a whole lot of things like that. 
So internal intruders is something which we need to pay attention to, spam, phishing, or the other threats. The biggest problem is our life is controlled by the mobile. In case anything goes wrong with the mobile, we are totally lost. So mobile is a big archive, a big storage of information and technology. That is what we need to also take care of. So what is happening in today's world of increase in cybercrime? Because cybercrime case, all you require is a nice laptop, understand the vulnerability, a nice, uh, you know, what is that called? Bandwidth. If you have the, uh, you know, the interest, you can find a vulnerability and get into it. If you are working from home, the criminals are also working from home. So what is happening here is today it is called the remote access work, R-A-W, raw. We are raw to everything because we are new, getting new. It's a new thing for all of us. So, uh, you know, the hackers and the fraudsters are having a whole lot of, uh, you know, going. Uh, it is business as unusual today. So exploits, showing some urgency, greed, fear, they exploit your machine. And, uh, you know, earlier it was muscle power, then it became money power, and now it is information is the power. So you need to be careful, you know, uh, on uh, how you understand, how you use it. You need to use, we all use, we need to use uh, common sense and, uh, uh, you know, take care of uh, the security. So uh, coming back to all this thing, uh, how the life cycle of attack happens as per a certified ethic course. First, they sit and reconnaissance your system, they scan it, they gain access to your system, and they maintain the access there. And then once the attack is open, and typically Mandian says they are in your system for about 200 plus days before they create an actually do an attack. And that is what we have seen in the Cosmos Bank uh, situation. So what is happening in today's world? Just the previous speaker, Arshad, spoke about darknet, deep, uh, uh, deep fake, he spoke about, uh, you know, CSAM, uh, and he spoke about the entire, uh, you know, thing. Yeah, I think I can see uh, hand raised. Anybody wanting to ask a question? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I continue if there's none. Uh, so we are talking about fake news, which can actually create communal tensions. Which, which, which can also be, which could be also be put across by hostile countries to us to divide the country. Multiple things happening on that. We have seen advanced persistent threat, uh, a big problem. Organized gangs, absolutely. Cosmos Bank at time was absolutely, you know, very well uh, perceived and done. Uh, future attacks, uh, you know, there can be attack. Uh, a, a gun can be printed on a 3D printer and it can be fired upon. It can be fired upon. So we are talking about, we are talking already talking about smart cities. We are talking about IoT. We are talking about industrial Internet of Things, the SCADA systems, which are less patched. So more chance to vulnerability. So we need to be, everything is becoming smart out of us. So uh, chances of a cyber murder, bloodless war, cyber espionage, and a whole lot of things uh, is what we all need to take care of. And new people are the people who are doing research, uh, are the scholars, are the faculties. And that is where, you know, as a long term, we need to get the cyber security basic awareness into schools, into a very basic educational level. As drones are in operational in uh, operation, the Dubai police was already as tested, you know, uh, going up in the skies with their uh, bikes, overcraft and all that to catch, you know, uh, Traffic about. So, if not, if that is not enough, then we have Google, which is breaching the privacy, which can spy upon you, your smart TVs. If it is not configured properly, they can actually you know listen to your talks, whatever you are doing. Over. So, but so what is happening? The law enforcement under the public-private partnership mode. I am also part of the Kerala Police. In that, you know, technical people like you and me can work with the law enforcement and uh, ensure that you know we also work with them under the cyber security policy of 2013 and uh, you know we help them to solve cases and there are multiple ways where the data which is stored either in the pacemaker or smart tvs or fitbit and whole lot of things which are always on by which we can help the law enforcement to ensure that the fraudsters are caught
and uh, i can ensure you i can assure you there are uh, you know uh, police organizations like telangana kerala even maharashtra cyber which are doing a brilliant job as far as technology is concerned they got the best of best things in place and they are getting into a ppp mode and uh, you know they, and if you look at uh, if you look at cybercrime.gov.in there is a tag called cyber volunteers now if you wish if you are passionate if you are interested you can get as a volunteer into cyber uh, crime.gov.in as a cyber you know uh, volunteer to help the government to catch fraudsters so that is a special tab on cybercrime.gov.in right now there are multiple attacks happening through social engineering but i there i get a call from a bank saying that aapka card block ho chuka hai aapka you know atm card block ho gaya kyc nahi kiya and there are attacks happening from jamtara bharatpur and whole lot of places like that and unfortunately people give information i have had multiple places where doctors have lost about 8, 1 lakh rupees on matrimonial sites because they trust the stranger senior citizens are getting hit because they trust the stranger there is nobody else to speak to them thing remember you can patch your system all but there is no patch to you must to be dt if you give information to others we ourselves are vulnerable to all this information so this is what the mumbai police say mumbai yeah, tala lagao you are putting tala on each and everything but put a tala on your mouth when you give information to others be careful mai prakash tandel mai pratnya desai aaj hum aapko ek bahut zaruri baat batane wale hain waise to hum waise to hum kitne sare tale lagate hain मकान पर दुकान पर तिजोरी पे दो चाबी वाला ताला रिमोट कंट्रोल से खुलने वाला फोन पे बैठन वाला लेकिन वक्त आने पर हम एक जरूरी ताला लगाना भूल जाते हैं अगर फोन पर कोई आपसे आपका एटीएम पिन मांगे तो लगा लो ताला और अगर कोई आपसे आपका सीवी भी मांगे तब और सो बेसिक यू हैव श्योर दैट यू नो यू 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 डू नॉट गिव अनवांटेड इंफॉर्मेशन टू द पीपल so how do you phishing attack is one of the largest attacks what we are seeing in the corporate world so how do you uh, check uh, who's sending you the emails so this is a 4 minute video which i'm skipping but uh, this are all available on the youtube how do you check a phishing attack how do you check who's the sender of your email how do you check uh, you know the uh, go beyond the email and read you know the uh, via the options you can read the headers in the email and find out from where the Who's who's uh, sending this emails? So Emma this is a four-minute uh, video. But today she also received what's known as a phishing email. A malign. So in short, if there are so many attacks ha- happening, then what do a common person do? What are the ten things which you know a common person will do to make his life or her life little easier and to make life of the fraudsters a little difficult? These are the you know. five things at least five ten things that i will do first is whenever i got a credit card i will go to you know verified by visa or verified by master i will go there and register my card and put a user id a, a password there so that every time i use it this page will come up before final payment i know it is not taking me to a third party website unwanted website i am put my information on a genuine website now everybody you are being watched there is no privacy left the data the act is coming very soon it's in the parliament uh, in the budget recession so but the, at this point of time there is no privacy left your data is going left right and center it is purely because you uh, in terms and conditions you press enter i i accept in 3 seconds without understanding who all is you know on coming on to your mobile because you give access to your camera you give access to your uh you, you know uh, microphone contacts and everything so your information is all across the place so on top of it this is a typical eu la end user license agreement which you don't read but this is what all they take it from you so there are corporate policies that need to be put in place document classifications privacy monitoring email communication social engineering malicious code and whole lot of security incident response systems uh, policies how do you manage intellectual property whole lot of things that we need to place it so what are the five things or 10 things that i will do uh, to keep security in place first of all if you go into gmail security uh, access of your system you can know what is gmail accessing what are the apps being accessed by gmail so this is where you need to be careful go into gmail go into security go to success settings and see what all applications is ex- accessing 
you know, your information. So uh, settings and configurations is extremely important. That is where we need to think. Deleted documents can be retrieved forensically. So even if you do something wrong and if you delete the document, you're just deleting the indexing part. The document is still there and it can be retrieved through forensics tools. I, for one, I have disabled my Aadhaar biometrics uh, from uidai.gov.in and I enable it only whenever I want. I am reducing, I am mitigating the risk. I am patching my systems regularly and mobile uh, patching, I, I patch it regularly. Then, you know, uh, other things what I do here is when I do a financial transactions, I don't save my card at various sites. I keep on entering it. Then on the back side of my credit card, I delete, uh, I black out the CVV number so that even if it falls into somebody's hand, they cannot use a card not present transaction. I try to use a dynamic uh, uh, card number, which is available with HDFC, ICICI I, I banks. And uh, once I do my transaction, I uh, close the browser and then I start another browser for uh, any other transactions. I always use a strong password. It is. It might be a past phrase also. And uh, nowadays, uh, even, even a Gmail has got a passwordless, uh, you know, uh, facility. Uh, I activate the two-factor authentication and uh, any login, extra login happening, I can monitor it if I configure it properly. I do not press links from unverified resources. So, you know, in, even if I, when I give my mobile for, uh, uh, or repairs, I wipe the data and give it. Now, I, I don't give it with the data. And, uh, you know, I when I exchange it, I ensure that my IMA number is mentioned as it is surrendered. Otherwise, somebody can, uh, you know, use it. Uh, I, I update my operating systems. My Bluetooth is off. You know, a whole lot of things. When I use my Wi-Fi, I ensure that I secure it by WPA2. I ensure that it is, you know, a Mac binding is done. I ensure that the routers are closed in the night. So these are the few simple things which I do to make the life difficult for the fraudster and the hacker. I will always put a user ID and a password password to my router. So, uh, you know, multiple things like that on the social media, I'm very, very clear about reducing, reducing my digital footprint. And uh, you know, yeah, so, you know, this is a small uh, thing. If you're able to see the video, this is a two minute, uh, you know, uh, educative series by DBS Bank about how do you configure a password. This is about a child being born at home and how they, you know, name the child. So this is a two minute uh, video on naming the child at home. And uh, so these are all available uh, on that. So you can watch it at your leisure. One of the attacks, what we are seeing, uh, you know, quite a lot to the end users are KYC, Paytm, Google Pay, OLX, request money related fraud. So if you sell things on OLX or a KYC, you know, uh, somebody calls you saying that your KYC is not done on your Paytm, then what happens is they ask you for money in which basically to, even if you sell something on the OLX and if you have to receive the money, they ask you for the U UPI pin or a QR uh, uh, scan code is sent to you. Please understand one thing, that the QR or any other UPI has to be done only to receive, and not to receive payments, only to make payments. It is very, very important that you need to enter the PIN only for sending money and not to receive. From basic area, you know, you people should be giving to the layman across and to make life difficult for the fraudsters. Screen sharing apps like, uh, you know, any desk or, uh, Team viewer should not be downloaded. Even if it is downloaded, it has to be configured properly. Uh, so these are the few things that we need to understand. So what are the implications? Oh, now there is a thing called uh, you know IT policy, which I told you. So what are the implications as per the IT Act of violating these codes? It could be jail. It could be you know behind the bars. It could be fines, penalties, and compensations for the organizations, or it could be a reputation or a brand loss, which can you know. Forever, it can haunt you. So, uh, it, in India, we have something called the Information Technology Act 2000, and there has been various notifications uh, under this act. Uh, uh, sections 65 to 74 and 85 are about criminal penalty and very, very important. Uh, and uh, this is a, just a, uh, a small 
piece of uh, the IT Act. What does IT Act in tandem with the Indian Penal Code uh, uh, say? What are the sentences and what are the remarks? Is it bailable, non bailable? Correct. So these are the things which one has to you know, take care of. Uh, while ensure, using technology, you cannot say that you're not ever of the IT Act in this country. You should know the IT Act. You can buy the IT Act, Bear Act, available for 200 rupees and read section 65 to 74. Uh, it will be useful for all of you. So uh, the key takeaways are configure your systems, stock, think, and connect. Configure all your systems before you start using it. Correct. So build a safety culture. You need to change your culture. Take a cyber insurance cover. It is available for retailers, for retail people. You know, whole lot of things. Do not use public uh, uh, computers on a public network like uh, you know, railways or, sorry, leave the information like this. It can be, you know, photoed and sent across. So we talk about your conduct in public. Be careful on what you talk in the public. People are listening to you and they can use your information. It has to be locked. Where somebody can put a map. Easy to guess.